Being the center of attention in Facebook comments and memes and composition forums, 433 is a piece you either admire or constantly make fun of. No better day to talk about the piece than on his birthday. Here's why there's actually a great deal of brilliance behind the composition of John Cage's 433. This video will be broken up into 433- nah, I'm just kidding. Two parts. The first explaining what the piece 433 is, and a history of how it came to be, and then why this concept was brilliant for the time being. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe for weekly content like this. Now 433 is a multi-movement work for any size ensemble, but there's nothing other than silence that fills the air for the duration of the piece. This work was composed in 1952, consisting of nothing more than just the sound, or really, noise environment, created by the surroundings of the concert hall. Cage was of the belief that any combination of sound was considered music, having experimented with silence in his compositions before in works such as his duet for two flutes, which opens with extended silence. He was reluctant to compose 433 at first, saying, quote, I don't wish to appear, even to me, as something easy to do or as a joke. I wanted to mean it utterly and be able to live with it. Well, John, your work today is used as a joke more now than ever in the modern discussion. If you were alive to see composer forums today, you'd probably cry. The premiere of the piece was given in Woodstock, New York by conductor David Tudor. The beginning of each movement was marked by the closing of the lid of the piano, and the end of it uh, marked by the, its opening. The audience initially felt cheated, having heard no sounds composed by the composer. But this piece, as one might imagine, became controversial in challenging the very definition of music. Music historians mark this as the beginning of noise music proper. Here's part number two, where we get into why this piece is genius. Now a lot of you probably think, it's just a bunch of silence, if anything it's the absence of music. Well there's an even deeper reason that this piece is so well conceived. A year before the piece's composition, Cage visited the Anechoic Chamber at Harvard University, which is essentially a room that absorbs all sound rather than reflecting it. Instead of hearing silence like Cage expected, he heard two sounds, one high and one low in frequency. The head engineer then told him the high sound was his nervous system in operation, and the low one was his blood in circulation. Creepy, right? Well, this concept gives deeper meaning to 433, since under the layers of various noises coming from the room, there is this unescapable music that continuously plays inside of us. Essentially, Cage reminds listeners of this internal noise by putting it on full display. This impossibility of silence directly led to the composition of 433, with Cage being cited saying, Until I die, there will be sounds, and they will continue following my death. One need not fear about the future of music. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you've learned anything today, be sure to hit subscribe and tap on that bell icon for more music theory and composition tips in the future. Until then, I'll see you next time.